All right, guys, big welcome again to our channel. We are team crushing the Mets. And as you can see, it's the same play mats. It's this card as the center of attention. And in this video, we will talk about the GBA deck and how the deck would look like with this card going in. So before we jump into that, we need to talk a little bit about this card. If you haven't seen the video where I did the review on this boy, uh, you could check it out, it's on the channel. If you have a question about how to print these cards out or how to cut them, there is another video that is one of our most videos on the channel that you can check out and you could see how to print those or how to make them. All right, so for the GB8 deck, there is a lot to talk about and I've made different videos throughout the, throughout the, the years that I've talked about how the deck look like and what to do with it and how to play it and how to turbo and everything. So for now, if you haven't seen the explanation on this card, I will explain it. So every clan is getting this card. It's a promo that you could play in V and in G um, or G and premium. And mostly it is made for defense and mostly it is made for premium. So what this card does is the first ability is the same for every clan, which is you can... It has a continuous ability from hand. You may discard this card as a heal trigger for the cost of calling a G-Guardian. So basically when you want to G-Guard, you could just discard this card instead of discarding a heal trigger, which is huge. The second ability is also an ability that every clan will have, but it's different from the one clan to the other. But the cost is the same and the way you use it is the same, which is an auto ability when this card is put on a guardian circle from hand, very important, you pay the cost, which is removing a heal from the hand or drop. Then you choose up to three normal units without sentinel and with different grades from your drop. You put them to the bottom of your deck in any order. Then you perform the following. If you have chosen and put back a grade 3 or greater card, you get you have this card get a 20k shield until the end of battle. So it becomes a 30k shield. Then the second ability, you choose three cards. If you have chosen three cards, then you pay the cost, which is a count blast of one. Then you choose one of your fingers and it gets plus 5k until the end of turn. So it's basically EG card, but on steroid. <laughs> um, it's a very good card. It becomes a 30k shield and you can give your Vanguard an extra 5k, so it's a 35k shield. If your Vanguard is a 13k, that's 18, 28, 38, 48. That is like a huge G guard. That is, that is, that's our biggest G guard right there. That, that's just a Linus. That's, that's huge. That's insane. So, but then the 5k will still stay until the end of turn. Of course, it costs you a cult blast, but sure. So yeah, I think the card is insanely good and the card will change the, the GBA deck a little bit and we will see how that change will affect the deck that we already have. So for that, we first need to talk or show you a little bit of the deck. I don't want to do a deck profile. If you guys are interested, I could do a different deck profile with and without the card if you want. But for now, I just want to show you how the deck look like and how that card could fit in. So for the starter, we have Mega Trainer. Of course, nothing will change there. For the triggers, we start with the over trigger. I'm playing purple because it fits the deck more. And if you want to know more about why, then I could show you in a deck profile. Then for uh, the, uh, the crits, we play E4 copies of Liar Lips. Because the deck is more into E aggro version, and because this card acts as a 15k shield, and it also acts as E draw trigger when you damage check it. Uh, it's pretty good and it fits the deck very, very, very well. Then we play uh, more draws. So we play the, we used to play the vanilla draws, but now we play the draw triggers from Overdress, which gain an extra 5K in a beautiful art. So of course we play them. And then for the extra draws, of course we play three PGs as they fit the deck quite well as well. And then for the heals, this is something that could change in the future, but for now we will keep the four deadly heals. 
but I will put these right here because these are the first card that the new promo grade one could change. At least maybe play less than four. Then for the grade ones, of course, that lineup will change. We play one Acrobat Verdi, we play one Loruk, we play two copies of Honoli, we play three tiers, and we play a newcomer, which you guys haven't seen before, and this girl is insanely good. Well, of course, you don't use her second ability as <laughs> you don't have a, um, a right Vanguard for that, but you have the first ability, which is when this unit is placed on Rearguard from hand, you counter blast one, you look at the top three cards of your deck, you choose one of among them, you put it into your hand, one goes into your soul, and one goes into your drop zone. So, yeah, how is that good? It's very good because sometimes you have cards in your deck that you don't want to have in your damage zone. And if you want to take them out of the damage zone, then you could put them in your soul or in your drop. But also, it helps to get the right cards to the hand. It helps you to get a grade three, it helps you to get Acrobat Verdi, it helps you to get the heal, it helps you to get whatever you need. A grade two, if you don't have a grade two, you don't want a G assist. Before that, you could use this. It is a card that does make a big difference, but it depends on your playstyle if you could fit it in or not. Because it is a card that costs a counter blast and it's made to be played in the early game. But it's also a card that you could put on the field to put more pressure on your opponent and it doesn't cost you something because you do get a card back. But again, the grade one lineup will change, of course. So I will put all of the grade ones right here because that's something that we need to talk about. Of course, we play the order. We can't count this as a grade one. You can't write it. So this will stay. And of course, we play Angel Ladder, which is a card that is very, very, very important in premium. So we play a copy of. Then we go to the grade threes. Oh, sorry. We go to the grade twos first. We play four copies of Breach. This will stay. We play at least a three copy of the Demonic Lady. It's important to play at least three. And then I play two copies of Roberts, which helps very good with the deck and now even more by having this. Um, so yeah, he will stay. Maybe we'll try to play more. And we play one copy of Pakan. Pakan? <laughs> um, yeah, it's a card that you could um, use to play in around cards like Honoli. So yeah. The grade two lineup, I don't think it would change. We could add copies to it, but you can't, we can't take anything out. So for the grade threes, and this could also change, we play two copies of Max Max. We play only one Skydiver. We play a four copy of Rising, two on two. So we play all different arts and we play two of the V ones and two of the G ones. And then we play the four copies of Jelly Beans. All right. So the jelly beans could change. We'll put them right here. The rising will not. The risings will stay the same. The skydiver is a nice extra addition to the deck to have the, your setup restart again. So I like to keep the one skydiver in the deck, at least one. And then we have the two max max, which are your defensive options if you go second and you don't want to ride into rising to create a double marker. You could just go to Max Max and have a defensive next turn, which will be their second strike turn or first, depending on which, which deck they play. So the Max Max actually makes a huge difference in the, your um, way of playing. But then again, you will need to be lucky to have the Max Max in your hand to ride into it. And nowadays, I do see that there is less and less... Um, yeah, there's, there's just less and less moments where you, the max max will be effective. Of course, first it was a four off and it was always your first right target, but now most of the time you ride into a rising and then there is no reason to have this. So this is a card that you could take out, but it, it's not because of the new grade one. So this is, this is something that we talk about in a different video. Because you could take this card out and you could put grade threes in the deck that remove uh, the cards like Honoli. And by doing so, you could take out the grade two. You could take this out and you could add another copy of Roberts in the deck, which means you play three Roberts and Roberts will, of course, make the deck more playable, as in more consistent. 
So that is something that we could do. Take this one out to play an extra copy of Roberts, and then we take the Juggernauts out, we play one more Skydiver and one more removal grade three. That's the best way to do it. But for now, the Skydiver, we'll have a two off, so those will stay. Uh, there is no reason to go into the G-Zone for this specific video, because as I said, this is all about how the Great One will change the deck around. All right, so first things first. The first thing we need to talk about is the Jelly Beans and the Heal Triggers. So yes, this is something that we have played for a very long time. And now is the question, do we need to change it? For the first drafts, I don't think so. Why? These heals are important, as now they also have 15k shield, but they are important because they have the counter charge. And because they could counter charge during G guarding, you could counter charge and then use the counter blast for your G guard. And now, even more important, as he costs the counter blast as well, then you need the counter blasts and you need this card. Adding the grade 3 heal to the deck is also very important because it's a grade 3 you could use to discard for your rising to ride into your new old strides. So if you want to do that, then that's understandable as well, because you want to get into this. But then again, I would not take that chance that you could play two on two or just one of the heal guardians and you will never see it in time or in the early game. And there's just no reason to, to have that gamble. But with time, with testing the deck more and more and more, maybe we will take out some lindsies and add the other heal on the deck and with that we will take out the jelly beans but for now i think it's good the jelly beans are quite good in the deck you could always use your acrobat verity to get the rising to your hand and show off the jelly beans and the jelly beans will go back to the deck to get you a heal anyway so it doesn't matter that your opponent have seen it or not so for this the deck is still in good balance and i don't think that it's wise to change that around so for now these will stay, but maybe they will not stay for long. But that's up to testing. Now we go to the grade one lineup, and that's the lineup that will definitely change with having the new Havoc, with having the new grade one. So first, how many grade ones do we want to fit into the deck? Is there, do we need to do four right away? Um, I don't think so. I don't think that it's necessary to play four I think it's fine to just add two to the deck and see how the deck works, but you could also add three and that's 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 good as well. We're having three of these in the deck. I already have seen that the deck plays in a different way. Um, which cards you could take out? I like to have the one copy of Reluk in the deck because it's a card that I could sometimes search with my Mega Trainer. If I know that I'm going second and the next turn it will be a very hard turn to defend and I don't want to drop a PG right away, then I want to have this. I want to always have access to this card in the deck. So that's why I want to play with one. The Honolies, you want to play two. I don't think that you want to play less than two because you want to see them and you, you always sometimes call the two to the field. So yeah, two are good. Tear, on the other hand, is a card that we don't use anymore in this deck that much because of the fact that the loop doesn't need counter blasts at all. So, would you still play Tear? Yes. Why? Because it's a good counter to Honolly. If they activated Honolly during the main phase and it's gone and they activated only one Honolly, then you could still play around it with cards like Tear because Tear could still Soul Blast and you could still counter charge. And with the amount of face up damage you have, you could use the tier to counter charge three or four, depending on how much cards you have face up in your G zone as Cray Elementals. And if that GB8 turn doesn't kill, then you go into another GB8 turn. But the tier already have taken a bunch of cards from your opponent's hand. So yeah, in my opinion, the tier is effective. Do we need to play three? Not necessary. We could also just play two. I think with two, it's fine. Less than two, I would not do it. Uh, because, of course, you could recycle him with 
some of your cards, but then you're wasting resources and do we want to do that? And the next card we have is this, and this is a very flexible card. So you could have it in the deck, you could take it out, and the deck will function the same. So there is no reason to keep it in. It does cost count plus in the early game, which sometimes you don't have, or sometimes it just doesn't work, or sometimes you get it later. It's only a 5k shield, which doesn't really want to work with some of your cards, but on, on the other hand, it's an 8k, which makes it a good card to hit your opponent with if they're playing e 13 k base Vanguard, but it doesn't make that big of a difference. So what would you do? Well, if you're not a fan of this card, you could just take it out. You could just take it out and you could just play three copies of this and then leave the one tier in here. So you have three tiers and three of this. That's fine as well. If you want to go four right away, be my guest and then take this one out then then this would work as well if you want to have more rook in the deck you could just add a, take a second copy of it and then you take one of these out and then you you will be playing two 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 three one that works as well as i said it will change on how the format will change so this is the easiest card to take out because it's also the card that I have seen many of my friends that play Spike Brothers could not really play with this card in their deck. They told me that it was very, very, very strange and very awkward to have this card. It always came in too late. It did not work the way that they wanted to. But for me, it works pretty good. So also it's easier to test because if I have these in the deck, I could always think about them as off they are this card while testing and see in which situation having this or this will be more effective. But in when this card will come out, it would definitely replace her because it's basically the heal trigger that you needed and without having to go into the trouble of searching to it. Also, it stays in your hand, which means it's hidden, which means your opponent doesn't know what you have and if you have the right card, yes or no. This, on the other hand, could get you different cards than the heal trigger. And that's something that is we haven't seen that before. So that's why I do like this card a lot, because it could also give you a grade three. If you don't have a grade three in your hand, um, and you could get the Acrobat Verdi, but the Acrobat Verdi only works if you have a heal in your hand. So if you have that situation, then this card could help you out to check the top three for a grade three, because basically it could add anything. It could add anything to your hand. If you haven't seen the card or read the text, it's basically very simple. It's an auto ability when this card is placed on rear guard, from hand, you count plus one, you look at the top three cards of your deck, and then you choose a card from among them, and you put it into your hand. You choose a card from among them, and you put it into your soul, and then you discard the rest. So I've, I've already read it on, the, on this video, but again, reading it again sometimes do help. It doesn't matter what you add into your hand, you could pretty much add anything, and they don't see what you have added. And that's something that actually makes a difference. And that's it. That's it for, for how the deck would change. Uh, it's up to you to, to make the changes that you feel like fits your playstyle the most. For my playstyle for premium nowadays, I do like to give the opponent a little bit of damage and try to kill them off on the first GB8 turn, as always. But then sometimes also try to kill them even before that. And because the deck is more of an, of an aggro GB8 build, um, it does it does work. So yeah, you, you have to build the deck, of course, the way that you want to play the deck. And that is different from my player style. So yeah, that's pretty much up to you. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in our channel. channel. If you have any question about the GB8 deck, let me know. I'd be more than happy to, to show you a deck profile of the deck and I will also be more than happy to show you a deck profile with the new promo or without. And by doing so, we need to think about the the jelly beans in, in this situation and how the jelly beans will stay or leave the deck 
or be less played copy of jelly beans because there is in my opinion while well, having three havoc add to the deck there is no reason to play four jelly beans i mean that that's that's that is just overkill but the jelly beans will be more of a card that you discard when you want to stride which is something that's important as well because that's a that, that is something that the deck sometimes misses because you want to have your jelly beans going back to your deck to add the heal but now because you do have the chance to have the heals in a different way than using your jelly beans it will be overkill to use the jelly beans to get a heal <laughs> so what you will do is having the jelly beans is good in your hands if you have havoc then it's good if you don't then you could always use the jelly beans if you don't use the jelly beans and you could use it to this to stride and then you have a grade three in your drop zone which you could add back to your deck with cards like him or with your G guards and with that you will have another way to stride later on that is it but if you want to make the deck also consistent on rewriting then of course you would at least take one jelly beans out to add another copy of let's say max max then you have three max maxes and that makes the deck also more consistent so that is something that you could change around because adding three havocs taking one jelly beans out you still play two more ways to 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 go to your g guards but you don't play that much great ones which means the havoc is sometimes a card that you ride into so then you will play one more way to get into your g-cards but still one more way even by taking out the jelly beans i hope that you guys are not understanding the math right here <laughs> but um, we're taking the worst case scenario if you add three havocs to the deck you could take out the jelly beans if you add only two havocs don't take out the jelly beans and that's it that's 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 my uh, advice to you if you want to listen or not it's up to you <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for watching and thank you for tuning in our channel. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and uh, leave a comment in the comment section below if you guys have uh, played this deck before or are playing it right now and if you're enjoying it and what is your build. So I'm interested in uh, people playing different builds. Always nice to see. All right. Thank you again until next time.